Good morning. Good morning. Oh, my face so shiny. Mouth so shiny. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I pray that those who are already on their way, I pray that you have an amazing day. And for those of you who like the morning kind of shaky, your day now seem like it might be a little ugly, a little dark. I want to encourage you to keep moving, keep pressing, that nothing stays the same. If it's bad, it's gonna to have to turn good. Okay. And if it turn if it's good, you continue to be good. So don't fret about if your morning is not going good. But honey, I am here to give you an encouraging word. Mm. God is so amazing. So, you know, 2020 has been kicking our tail, right? But I want to let you know it's okay. Um, God has the final say. He knows the beginning to the end. God knows what's going on. God knows all things. He's everywhere. He knows absolutely everything. And then there are some of us that who have our private tears and our own private time and our own private moments where people don't even know. People don't know that how you cry at night, how you, how you, you know, dealing with things like emotionally. It could be physically, spiritually, all kind of things are going on. And you're not broadcasting it to people. You go on with the flow, you know, you relaxing. Well, God want to let you know that in your private pain, you will rejoice in your private reign, which means that, okay, slow it down. Elijah, I was reading the book of First King, in the book of Elijah, um, First King. Elijah was on the run. He, he was, um, God had instructed him to go by the brook of Sharon, the Sharon. So Elijah going out there with like no provision, like he ain't got no money. He ain't got no way to lay his head. He just dare. But God sent them to the, God sent him there to by the brook and told him to sit there. And God instructed a raven to bring him bread, you know, to feed him. So long as he stayed there, long as the brook was running, he had his water, he had his food, he had his provision by God. Well, this come up on him where the brook had dried up, the raven stopped coming. And God told him, okay, I got you, Elijah. Chill out. I got you. You know, you're my mouthpiece. Um, you're my child. I, you belong to me. I got you. So he told him, get up and go to this place right here. I have, he said, go to Zarephath. 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 I can't pronounce it too good, but I'll be trying. Anyway, he told him to arise and go there. He said, I have conditioned a widow woman, her heart, to, to take care of you, to provide for you. And he said, so he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, please bring me a little water and a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. I only have a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said, hold up. Wait a minute. He said, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall a jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went and did accordingly to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days, and the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run out according to the word of God, which was spoken by Elijah. So, Elijah was a prophet of God, and whatever he spoke, he spoke that the heavens came in agreement with him, and it came. There was a time that Elijah had prayed for the rain not to come. It didn't come. There was a time that Elijah prayed for the rain to come. The rain, the rain come. What I'm saying is, like, this day and time, like, we have prophets. Don't get me wrong. There's some, there some good prophets. There's some bad prophets. You know, we just didn't know. But what I think, what I love about God in this day and time, that you don't have to run to a prophet 
to get your provision from God. Because of what the blood of Jesus has done for us, I'm not saying I don't respect the office. I'm not saying that. But because of the blood of Jesus, that the veil was torn between us and God. When you um, ask for forgiveness, when you repent of your sin, when you go before God's holy throne, you go before him with a remorseful heart, like, Lord, I'm sorry. You know, just like, Lord, I need your help. Like, really go to God in spirit and in truth. Even if you're a person, thank you, Holy Ghost. God said, even if you're a person that you know you ain't even trying to get it right, God loves honesty. He likes the pure in heart. See, you might be going to God and thinking like, God, look, huh, I'm a thief and I'm going to always be a thief. But hey, I need your help. God respect that because that's what you choose. But all at the same time, God loves you. He loves you so much that you coming to him in the form of the way that you are, that God will say, hey, I'm tearing that down. And when you, when you, when you have taken the title of thief, God will turn you around to, be, to give you a title of a giver. You see what I'm saying? That's what I love about God. Because when you come with God um, in all honesty, he respects you. In the book of Revelation, I think I'm going to say Revelation 3, where it talks about um, God said he don't, he don't like lukewarm, lukewarm people. He said, either you're going to be hot or you're going to be cold. He said, but if you lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. So you go to God if you hot, you hot. If you cold, you cold. You go to God. Because anytime we go to God, God knows things that we don't know. He knows our inner out. He knows everything. He knows that you might be a filthy little stanky little rag. And you ain't even trying to change. But, but when you get up in the presence of the almighty God and you begin to talk to God, God will take that thing and he will, he will get them demons off of you. He will get them spirits off of you because he's God. He would do it without you even asking. He would do it. God is so amazing that when he does things, he does things for his glory. He does it so that we can boast and brag about who he is. Okay? So, the widow woman, when Elijah approached her, Elijah, she like, okay, cool. I perceive this is a man of God, so hey. I'm going to give him this water and I'm going to give him this flower. Even though she had a little bit. She wasn't selfish. And when you come to God, you can't come to God with a selfish heart. If you want to enjoy your private reign, if you want to enjoy it, you got to come to God. You can't come to God with a selfish heart. The widow woman wasn't selfish. She had just a little bit. In her mind, she was already made up. Hey, this is it. I'm ready to die. Because... It shows you right here in this story that she knows God. So she was willing to eat that last little piece of bread and drink that water she and her son and die. It was over with. And she was good with that. She was good. So, but when the, well, when the prophet told her that when you do this for me, what God's going to do for you, your flower will never run out. Your oil would never run out. You will always have provision. That's what he told her. She grabbed hold to that word when Elijah said it. When he said it, she took it. And she took it personal. I'm going to do this for the man of God. Because I believe what he just said. That my meal would never run out. My flour would never run out. My oil would never run out. Me and my son would live. And she did just that. She sure did. That because she grabbed hold to the word. You grab hold to this word right here in your private pain and, and get ready to rejoice in your private reign. The tears that you cry, the heartache that you feel, the pain that you feel that you don't want to broadcast across the world and to people. When you give it to God in your private time with the Lord, and when you read in the word of God, because even when you're private time with the Lord, God want to let you know. In your hurt, in your pain, in your suffering, when you grab the Bible, the word of God, all that pain is going into the word of God. You begin to read something. That fit your needs. You begin to fit something that fits your hurt. You begin to read something that's, 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 that fit your trouble. You begin to read something that fits your prayer. And when you grab hold to these black words on the Bible, on the, on, 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 in the book, 
When you grab hold to it, just like the widow woman, when she grabbed a hold to it, what Elijah said, it's the same thing as having your own prophet right before you, just like the widow woman. When you grab hold to it, it's going to take root in your heart, baby. And when it take root in your heart, it's going to come up to your head. When it's going to begin to manifest, it's going to come through your mouth. Because when you begin to speak those things, what do you say? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. When you begin to speak those things, it has to come to pass. Elijah spoke those things and it came to pass. You are a child of the most high God. No, you might not be in the right position. Yeah, you might have been, been a little, little knucklehead, but you go to God with a remorseful heart. Like, God, I'm sorry. God, I, I do this, and God, I'm weak in my flesh. You go to God. You go to God with your hot self, with your cold self, and you let him know, God, that I need you. I can't do it without you. You really talk to God. Like, don't y'all know that everything that's going on, God want us the, the 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 children, the hand and the feet of God. He wanted to manifest in us. He want people to see the glory of God fall on us. He won't do y'all know that. But if you're not reading the word, if you don't have a relationship with God like the widow woman, even though her faith was a little wavering when she said we're gonna die, she was good because that's the human part of her. Our flesh, we see what we see, and we don't see no way. That's okay. Your flesh can get in the way a little bit. But when you read the word of God, flesh got to go out the door. The widow woman, her flesh had to go out the door. When the word came before her, when the word spoke to her, when the word said, give me, I'm going to give back to you. It had to go out the door. Your flesh, your, your, your little, your little, um, your doubt got to go. If you read it in the word of God, you grab hold to it. And you hold on tight to it and you believe in and trust it. You walk around like it's already has happened. And you trust and believe in God. And let me tell you one thing. And if something don't happen the way that you have asked God, you better believe this. It's something greater. It's something that's better. Because remember, our ways are not God's ways. God's ways is not our ways. But it'll line up when you say, God, let thy will be done. If it's not God's will for this to happen, even though you're praying about it, God lets your will be done. God will say, yeah, because I didn't want that to happen, you know. You talking about black, I'm trying to give you pearls. I got you. God knows all things, even with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he knew that the pressing was about to come, when he knew that he was about to go through, he knew he was about to go through, he knew that was about to kill, he knew these things. But guess what? When he said, Father, take this cup away from me. Take it away. He prayed. He, he prayed to drops of blood was falling. Like, take it away. Like, this going to be too much. I, I, I can't bear it. This coming from Jesus. Because remember, Jesus was man and he was also spirit. So right there in that time, his man part was speaking. But guess what? The spirit jumped in because the Bible said the angels had surrounded him. The angels had got around, began to minister to him. And he remembered that I am on this journey. It's not for me. It's for me to help somebody else. So Jesus stayed in that garden. And when it was time to get up, he said, okay, all right. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Because he knew that if he didn't finish the course, then you and I be so messed up. We and I would still be looking around waiting for a prophet. And we know some of these prophets now are so contaminated because it's about money. You know, they think some are so contaminated. So Jesus had to do it for us. He did it for us so that we could come before God ourselves. So that we'd be able to have the word of God and get understanding for ourselves. So you won't have to run here and there trying to help me figure out what this word says. No, 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 no. Jesus made it possible. And so when you begin to read the word of God and you stand before God, when God sees you, he sees Jesus. And Mark 11, 24, 23, 24, and 25, he said, anything that you ask in my name, it shall be. But guess what? If you ask in my name, you come in my name, it shall be. But guess what? He also said, if you got an alt against your brother, your sister, if you know you got some discord, you know you got some crazy foolishness going on, go and make that thing right and come back before me. God is so amazing. He is so amazing in everything that he do. 
So your private reign will be, your private pain will turn into your private reign. And you ain't going to have to boast and brag and show people. People are going to already see it. And that's what you boast and brag in the Lord. That's when you boast and brag to how you laid your head down on your pillow and you cried. How you sat in your truck in your car and you cried. How you walked through the mall and you cried. How you sat at the dinner table and you cried. How you ate what you, what you didn't want to eat and you cried. Do you hear what I'm saying? Your private pain will be your private reign, which God is going to bless you. And then you're going to go out and you're going to tell the goodness of the Lord. And not in a braggadocious way, but a braggadocious way that what God did it. That God did it. That God did it. How you sweat. How you cried. How, how, how you did all these things. Do you hear what I'm saying? How you only had $2 in your banking account. And God, God did it. You're going to be able to boast and brag on the Lord. But in order for you to boast and brag on the Lord, you got to go in the word. You got to go in the word and you got to find what the Lord is saying and you got to put it in your heart. Get it in your mind and speak it through your mouth. I'm telling you, God is good. God is good. And one more thing before I go, let me tell you about the widow woman. The widow woman, we don't know what she might have done in her past. The Bible just talked about the widow woman. She trusted and believed in what the word of God says. What I'm saying is, don't worry about what you've done in your past. It's okay. You ask for forgiveness and you keep it moving. Don't worry about it. You don't have it all together. Child, look how many of these millionaires are out here. They ain't have it all together, but they're blessed, you know, financially. So I'm just saying, trust God, his word. Pick up the Bible. Grab your word. I picked up the Bible and I grabbed my word and, um, and I believe in God that I shall give and it shall come back. Y'all have a blessed day.